people have been talking about um, the ECB launching quantitative easing, um, but that's not going to happen this time. You know, and uh, even as far as quantitative easing goes, we've already had quantitative easing from the ECB. It's what we haven't had is quantitative easing with sovereign bond purchases. Um, I mean, the interesting thing when it comes to the ECB is, is Germany and what Germany's saying and what Germany's not saying. You know, if we looked at um, the kind of conversation around any tr monetary transactions conducted by the um, any monetary policy from the ECB a year ago, anything that happened, Germany's voice is all over it. Any time they brought up um, euro bonds, um, Merkel would say no. Any time they brought up quantitative easing, Merkel would be straight up to say no. We've not really heard that um, of late. So, so but, but, but the whole th yeah, but isn't this the whole thing a bit of a pretense because uh, the ECP can't do anything because of Germany. Yeah. So what's Draghi talking about? I mean, well, just course, literally, I'm it's a hollow egg. Well, um, the only thing which has happened, though, luckily, since he started saying this, the dollar's gone through the roof. Yeah. And therefore, we've effectively had an easing uh, well, in that way. So th the question is now, from the from 125 or 124, what can happen next, realistically, given that the ECB's hands are tied? I mean, the whole point is that I think Germany would quite like to carry on with this kind of public rhetoric. They want to see the euro talk down. They need the euro talk down. The reason why they've not been so quick to jump up and quash it, you know, we had some talk from the Bundesbank um, chairman saying, Bundesbank president saying that they'd face significant legal challenges. But for the most part, they've been quiet because they want to see a weaker euro. And is it a bit of wrangling between Germany and the ECB actually bad for the euro, which is actually helping the Germans get yeah, the euro exactly. down? Exactly. They want to see the talk down. It's like down. a divided, divided policy. Yeah, yeah exactly. They would, it, they need to have it. They, they, they can't support um, sovereign bond purchases, but they want to hear talk of sovereign bond purchases because they want a weaker euro, because they need growth. You look at German numbers, they've got nowhere to go. You know, other countries in the eurozone, they've got structural reforms that need to be put in place. You know, they need why you look at you look at um, um, Spanish unemployment, you look at Spanish youth unemployment It's 53 percent in Spain. Germany doesn't have that option. Germany doesn't have the option of falling back on widespread structural reforms to get this growth. They need the Eurozone to pick up its act, and they need a weaker Euro to rely on imports. And so it's, it's, it's helpful to them. So this week is all about the ECB. Any, any other key features you could mention in this wrap-up? Um, well, we've got the Bank of England. Um, but the Bank of England doesn't really have the same kind of pressures. You know, we saw Citibank have pushed their estimates for a um, for the Bank of England um, rate hike later into, 20, into 2015, they've placed into the fourth quarter. Um, they're not really under any pressure. You know, we've had um, Mark Carney last week said we'd, see, we'd more likely than not see inflation dip below 1%. But when you look against the kind of backdrop of Eurozone inflation, it's not really a shocking number. Um, he's got the problem of the, of the Eurozone. He's got weak demand from the Eurozone. Yeah. But we've also got um, we've got weak wage growth, you know, and this is going to, you know, it's start to go away as inflation numbers dropped. But we still, despite having inflation numbers threatening one percent, we don't have this wage growth. People aren't feeling, you know, inflation is still dipping into any real kind of. People still aren't feeling richer when they get their pay packets. They do not feel better. I think this is going to come. To, this is going to become more and more of a kind of dominant theme of Bank of England policy is people want to feel richer than they did a year ago, richer than they did well, four I, years I, ago. I did a, a, a recording earlier today and the, the point was that, you know, with petrol prices falling, yeah. okay, I've got more money in my pocket. I feel better. Yeah, yeah. It, it was strange that it was, it was, it's quite strange last week when, you, when all the um, oil prices started to tank and people talked about the detrimental effect on inflation. Like that. It's, it's, it's not a detrimental effect. And a, a, a drop in, in fuel in energy prices is a it's stimulus. Got to, it's it's got a good be, thing. It's great you know. news. Interest rates, yeah. you know, being pushed further out. You're talking less inflation.